audit released by the BC Ministry of Transportation claims that it can save TransLink an additional $41 million annually, with over $10 million of that coming from reducing low-yield routes as well as cutting down on the frequency of routes on weekdays. With a distance-based uh, road pricing schedule, collection points are placed along key transit arteries. The collection points read the driver's plates and calculate the distance traveled by the road user. Now critics of the system feel like it creates congestion on smaller routes as people attempt to avoid the collection points. However, Mayor Walton feels it's the only fair way to distribute future transit costs. In a picture-perfect world, Vancouverites would be able to grow 100% of their food supply in urban planter boxes like this one. Though that might be far from reality, the Sustance Festival hopes to further the conversation. Members of the Stanley Park Ecology Society are putting some muscle behind a project designed to make an impact. Nestled just beyond the high rises of Vancouver's West End, the wildlife of Stanley Park's Lost Lagoon will be getting some much needed privacy. Basically what we're trying to do is, is set up these logs offshore as little islands, floating islands for birds. So the Parkwood staff have used their machines to bring the logs to the lagoon. Um, so what we're going to do is grab the logs and um, basically tie them to chains that we're going to anchor offshore in the lagoon and uh, hopefully they'll stay there for many years um, providing habitat for all the great winter water birds that we have here. Robin is just happy to put her skills to work thanks to a generous $50,000 donation from HSBC. Again, HSBC stepping forward with some funding directly to the nonprofit so that we can um, do what we do well. Which wasn't always the case. Eroded by years of neglect, it wasn't until the windstorms of 06 and 07 that the public began to take notice. What it accomplished was a, a much higher profile for Stanley Park. Everybody loves Stanley Park, but I think they felt that it was resilience in and of itself. The city is now very much an active partner, putting forth as much as a half million dollars in funding. It was really a, an eye-opener for us. Uh, quite shocking, actually. And, uh, and I think it was um, it really was an impetus for, uh, impetus for us to, to evaluate our priorities. The logs installed here today as part of the HSBC Freshwater Initiative is but a small part of the overall Stanley Park Ecological Action Plan a joint venture between the Ecology Society and the city aimed at restoring damage done to the park over time, setting it up to remain one of the world's most prolific urban park centers well into the future. Lucas Scott in Vancouver for BCIT Magazine. As the SFU clan tip off their first full NCAA season, a host of new faces are providing a surge of energy. While the team hopes to make big strides for the sport in Canada, it's surprisingly an American that's generating plenty of buzz. Washington, D.C. native Eli Matthews leads the team in scoring through the first four games, and his tenacious play has been a lightning rod for the offense. Uh, you know what, it gives us some, some energy right off the bat because we've got a lot of guys that are, are very skilled, but you know they can't do the things that he can do offensively. He's, he's very gifted and uh, you know has some natural defensive talent that you, you just you, you can't coach. I think defense is more so about intensity. <laughs> uh, yeah, I get that from my dad just growing up, just pushing me to do everything. Uh, everything I do, it got to be 110%, so I guess it carries on to the court. And carry over it has. The clan are a perfect 4-0 to start the season. But even Matthews admits he didn't see himself playing in Canada. No, not at all, actually. Um, I didn't even think about Canada until uh, my um, junior, no, sophomore year. Uh, the assistant coach, Coach Klein, I used to coach in my school. I was at my freshman and sophomore year. He had told me to come on out here. It was a good academic school. Uh, and they were going to the NCAA next year. Coach Blake says it's opened new doors for the school. It's, it's been very easy to recruit now. You know, it doesn't matter if you're going to Montenegro or, or if you're going to Kamloops, BC, they know about you now. Traditionally, Canadian athletes had no choice but to migrate south to pursue their athletic goals. But the NCAA designation is changing all that. It has. Yeah, it has. And again, I talked about the BC kids first. We're, we're, you know, we're in the recruiting hunt for the top kids in the province now, where my first year we weren't even involved. You know, we really had to kind of scrap and get guys that maybe had gone somewhere else and come back. The importance of this season and what a championship would mean isn't lost on Matthews. I think it would mean a lot. Um, so far, they're a great academic school, and I feel like it would be great, you know, you know to have both sides, the athletics and academics. And I know it's a real big honor for them to come in and play and try to win a championship, bring one back to SFU in Canada. 
The team faces their first big test on December 1st versus defending champions Western Washington. Win or lose, the landscape of varsity sports in Canada has been altered for years to come. Lucas Scott in Burnaby for BCIT Magazine. Hey guys, Lucas Scott with this week's BCIT Magazine Community Calendar. Looking to add some spice to this Thanksgiving's dinner plans? Don't miss your opportunity at the last weekend of the Richmond Summer Night Market, happening this Saturday and Sunday, 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. For more vendor details and directions, head to the website at summernightmarket.com. Creature Comforts more your style? The Vancouver International Film Festival is entering its final week of production, and the Van City Theatre on Seymour Street is being hailed as the ultimate in movie-going experience. For more details on showtimes and locations, go to the website at viff.org. Already pining for some NHL action? You don't have to go far for some great hockey. There's still plenty of tickets available for this Sunday's game at the Pacific Coliseum. Watch the hometown Vancouver Giants take on their new across-the-street rivals, Victoria Royals. Puck drop at 4 p.m. For more information on tickets and the upcoming schedule, head to VancouverGiants.com. For BCIT Magazine, I'm Lucas Scott, and that's all for this week's Community Calendar.